draw it. Okay, this is free, um, somebody's channel, but they, I don't say people's names, but you know who this is for because you asked for this, okay? You're a Capricorn, son in the fourth house, which is ruled by the home, the mother, and your fourth house is in Sagittarius. So you probably had to take control and be your own mom's father. I don't know. And your mother was really mother nourishing to you anyways. And in the moon, because your moon's in Cancer, uh, you're a Capricorn and you're a Virgo rising, which is awesome. That's like one of my favorite placements is Virgo rising. It is the best writers and they're they're psychically readable because for some reason I'm a Pisces I'm a Cus of Aquarius I'm a Cus Cus I'm a Moon Aquarius I don't know why I can pick up on things from Virgo rising people more easier than most people and your Moon's in Cancer so that'd be even more fun to pick up on your your uh, emotions and it's in the eleventh house which is rolls by Aquarius and social media and friends and stuff like that. So, uh, your mom was probably, like, your friend, but your mother nourishing one, um, or she was the kind that was, like, like, telling you not to be weird, and you're not allowed to, you know, but I don't think that, I don't know, or maybe she, she was, um, not irrelevant, but you care about your family, you care about your friends, you're the mother to your friends, or, I don't know, your mom probably moved far away or um or move made you move to do different studies or something i don't know your saturn's in sagittarius so you have opportunities to travel your dad probably made you move around a lot too and your your dad probably made you a liar you probably had a lie for your dad because it's in the third house you probably had um siblings that um are liars and um uh your third house is in Scorpio, so you could write when you're a publisher. Yeah, you could be a really good writer, but you'll have challenges like your book would be like awesome and it wouldn't be on nobody's shelf and everybody would be rejecting it, but like, um, you'll have to find out how to just probably do it by yourself and make your books anyways, because you can be your own publisher. You can do that. You can sell your own books. I mean, so what? Why do they have to be on somebody's store? I mean, who cares if they reject or not? But I'm sure you would be the badass writer because they'd give you that opportunity to be this writer, obviously, and be a public speaker. We're going to take it away from you. And you would probably be a liar and um, uh, uh, a clumsy idiot or something because it's sad or sad chairs in the third house of your hands. Hopefully you don't have any hand problems and I don't know, um, sexy hands, because your third house is in Scorpio, Scorpio will sex and death and transformation and cult knowledge, and you probably could write about that. You could, um, you, you know, and, um, your siblings probably, who knows, died, I don't know. Your Libra's, your left eye, and you pretty, and your 12th eye is Leo, and, no, your, is the left side is your uh second house and your right side is your 12th house of the eyes and um that's your emotional self right here is the right side and then the side that you want everyone just to take pictures of is on your left side so it's really really pretty and stuff and um oh my gosh your 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 uranus is in the third house too which is you could invent stories that are futuristic and it's in such areas of expansion of when you're traveling or learning stuff, you would write that stuff down, I guess, so. And your friends could help you. And, um, your Neptune is in the fourth house, so you probably got a delusional mom that was kind of like your had an egotistical mom because your son signs in the fourth house. And also, she was probably your biggest fan as well. She probably, um, <clears throat> I don't know. Will he ever really? Your Mars is in Scorpio. That is the most evilest placement of all. It's in the second house, which is the polarity of Scorpio, because the second house is ruled by Taurus, and the second house is in Libra, which means 
you are super jealous and violent in a relationship and you are <coughs> wanting other people's money. You probably, who knows, have sex for money. Who knows? I mean, it could mean that you are... Lilith and Taurus means that you are a fucking thief and you steal and you are people, um, you know, are good to you in your relationships. You're proud of your beauty and your relationships, but you are a thief and, um, the ninth house of your philosophy is Taurus. So if people don't hear you be preaching about what kind of money you made and how you made it and stole it and stuff. Plus, you're Virgo rising, so you can probably really sell some fucking cheap ass shit for like overpriced money. And because they're really good at that, lying to your face. And, um, Lilith and Taurus is the thing that people don't want to see. It's like Ursula from The Little Mermaid. She does your bidding, she steals your voice and takes your legs and like gives you legs or whatever but she takes them back and she takes your man and she just wants to win you all over she wants everything that you have or stuff in little mermaid it's lilith and taurus stay tuned for my lilith series or my Lilith video i don't know um don't get mad at me your venus is in a capricorn so you whether date somebody who has um a career like yours that you want and, um, uh, it's in the 1B house, the 4th house. So you would spoil your partner with, um, money, I guess. <laughs> and that you'd work with from home better. You'd work home from better with your relationships. Then the 10th house is how you're going to communicate, um, in the public's eye and in your career and stuff. So you might be like this car salesman or something, scammer, I don't know, a liar in the public's eye that your da dad taught you to be, <laughs> a polarity of your dad, you want to be opposite from your dad, but apparently you um, are also secretly 7th house Pisces, which is all the people that you're going to attract, you're going to attract all these delusional, believing, fantasy people, and you're going to be like, um... And all these suicidal, helpless, sad, but sweet people that just want to serve you and give you money and then you just take it and it's awful because it just sounds really bad, this, <laughs> these placements. And because you're just a freaking fucking liar. <laughs> it's terrible. It's Saturn in third house is a fucking liar. <laughs> and it's just... You'll have to learn lessons through that. You're not allowed to lie. You're, you're, you're not going to be able to give you that public speaker that it, it's supposed to give you. And you're supposed to be a writer. But everyone's telling you to shut the fuck up. Like your mom. I mean, your dad. And then uh, move, travel away from the place that y'all lied <laughs> about or something. But um, that's crazy. Your uh, sun sign's in the fourth house. Yeah, so... Of the home and uh but uh yeah your 10th house is in gemini so you could be showing many faces on camera mm -hmm. be cool your neptune's in the uh capricorn in the fourth house of home so yeah they probably like to film you <laughs> your uranus is the third house your sun is the third house your mercury's in the third house too so you might have communication problems and you also might have a lot of good voiceovers because you are a Capricorn. You could probably do many voices and especially being in the third house. They have the best voiceovers. Like they're amazing. You could just sell you as a cartoon voiceover phenomenal comedian person. It would be really cool because you'd probably be really ruthlessly funny when you talk because your third house is in Scorpio. If you're listening ruthlessly hilarious people and um your fifth house is in capricorn which means it's you know kind of rolled by saturn so you feel really weird about having fun so you probably just drink on the weekends and have this structured life of just working and working and feeling like you don't have anywhere to play and you'd rather work anyways because you are these earth signs capricorn and Virgo rising um and work from home 
and to help you with your emotions. <clears throat> because <clears throat> but you have no home because it's everywhere. You're traveling everywhere. And you might... Um, your 11th house is in Cancer. Everyone's your family. Your, um, yeah, your life purpose is in Taurus, North Nod, in the 8th house, Aries. You might die of a head-on collision. You might spend money too fast. You might have a head injury. You, you might have a neck injury. You might, um, and your purpose is to go into the cold knowledge, dark secrets and stuff and all that fun stuff and be in a chaos and also be stable while you're in chaos and just, just be stable. That's probably what you're like when you're a freaking liar and everyone looks like they're chaotic and they're getting mad at you and you're like, I'm perfect and I'm not going to look insane. I'm making y'all look insane, but I'm emotional and I can use that to my advantage and it's just... I can manipulate you all too well. I'm just amazing mother and I'm an amazing fathering figure. And my mother was um, this way to me in a way. Like she taught me how to uh, treat everyone equally. Mm -hmm. And now I know how to use them because I don't care if I wasted your $5 and, and you gave me a ride for a whole week for free. I told you I would give you $5 next week after two weeks later, you're like, yeah, you made me mad, so I'm not going to give you $5 because I'm a bitch. And I'm really well known for being a good driver. And people used to use me after I used them <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> Your Pluto is in Scorpio in the second house. Sex and secrets and money making and possessions of food and relationships. Just all that about that money. All about how to get the money. The power of the money. And the, for my family, I just have to feed my family. Give me money. Give me more. I will work really hard and be determined for this money. And I better have a man or a woman that's going to have money too. And they're going to work with me too. Or they're just going to like, get out, brown cow. You already know how to be a savage, Scorpio. You already know about that just darkness, despairness, and now it's time to be more stable, financially secure on your own. But you're not on your own. You're always with somebody making that money. It could have been an isolated event that you've had before. You, you isolate yourself um, and through food, and, like, um, just relaxing to get away from everyone, I guess. And your 12th house is Leo, so you're really not a, a, alone in your own sanctuary. But when you want to, you are, rawr, get out of here. I want to be alone right now. And because you also have a sixth house of Aquarius so you're friendly every day persistent knowledgeable of what you want to learn your Jupiter is in Aquarius this is a plan of luck higher learning and expansion and it's in your fifth house of parties and that's where you still feel like you're lucky with being having good party games like you're good you're really good at uh, being creative and sewing and making things but you feel like you don't draw that very well. You don't, you don't, you're not very good at your voiceovers. You just feel like your ego is crumbled and you can't do anything. But you can, and obviously if you do, you'll become freaking lucky as fuck with it. But it will just take it harder on you. You'll be, it'll be harder for you to structure this thing. But the more work you put into it, the more or the more how you ever you do your creativity, the more it would be better. And especially like with your hands or something, you could do this amazing stuff and you could be this amazing voiceover character or just this personality that you have. You could talk to children and kids and, and people with different voices. You could be a Saturday Live person, you know, comedian person with these placements of you know, Saturn in the third house and your, um, 
you know, you're 10 pounds Gemini anyway, so you're going to have to be using your voice about you can be a, a compelling emotional speaker about the fucking abuse that you probably went through <laughs> or the abuse that you secretly are putting other people through and it's going back and forth in your soul. <laughs> Drama causing. But um, people still want to come to you and um, they heal through you being an accountant, count their money, and maybe you are a banker. Maybe you are somebody who's counting people's money and they just need you every fucking day. They just need you every day. And you might do some shady ass shit because of Lilith and Taurus. But who knows? And, you know, they probably wanted you to teach them how to write and be a publisher and just be just like you when you came across it. Like, when they look at you, they're like, I want to be just like you. I want to look just like you, too. And, like, your crown is in Gemini, so you always have to heal you, how you communicate and what you're doing with your hands in your life anyways. Because, and how you lie and tell, tell stories. Like, you just, you just pit, get pent up and people catch you. But, eventually, it will pull over or uh, whatever but um your palace is in Gemini so your creative abilities are always with your hands and speaking and the bomb you know like oh yeah your Juno's in Scorpio and uh you'll you'll meet somebody in the marriage place and that darkness and despair and that other people's money kind of government thing that you want uh you'll you want that kind of marriage or some shit Oh, your vista is in Capricorn. Okay, with your reputation, your fortune is in Pisces. So when you are this um, character of the skin, all this unearned attention, unearned attention through your um, lies that you tell people about these delusional fantasies, you could probably be a coach. You know, you could be like. Oh my god, today is like a positive day for all you signs. You are so gonna win it, Aries. Oh my god, Taurus. This comfort is coming for you. You are gonna make all that much money today. Oh my god, Gemini. Did you hear the team? You got the best reputation now because you lied the best. Oh my god, Cancer. <laughs> Your family is gonna be in a magazine. Like, Leo, you are... Get, you just need a break today because everyone's going to do everything for you. Virgos, today's your day. Um, This organic farm has been sold to you uh, for a cheaper price. Oh, my God. Um, Libras, you are still so beautiful. Like, oh, my God. You, your clothing line... It's canceled and your store is closed, but you can be the mannequin in my store of a million dollars a day. Oh my god. <laughs> and you're gonna get married <laughs> in it, this church. <laughs> you're Scorpios. Y'all, y'all are gonna be an episode of South Park. Uh -huh. And Sagittarius is, oh my goodness, you are not going to get this a uh, vacation. You are the vacation guru. Just sit there and tell us what you've learned because I can't wait to hear you preach about your bullshit. Capricorns, oh my goodness. Well, there's more hard work to do because you just tore this fucking place up so now you just have to rebuild it. Remodel this car for us because you'll enjoy that the most. Aquarius, everyone is your best friend. You're no longer an outcast. We understand you, oh my God. That weird shit that you did is just the future. And we want to be just like you because you're like the trendsetter. Pisces, oh my god. We all fucking care about you. Don't commit suicide, please. We know how sad you are. Because we feel it too. We feel you so much. And we believe you that your fucking unicorn Pegasus story that flew into your mirror. And it wasn't because you threw your lipstick at it that you're writing on the fucking wall with. We believe you. Yeah, because, you know, <laughs> not really, but we can because we want to, because we want to be delusional too. Probably those seventh house people that are just like, you're attracted to all those people. <laughs> Whatever, and like, as if, 
But that's awful that um, your eighth house has to be like you spend money too much without thinking and other people's money and it's like coming in and it's like, whoa, put on the brakes. Don't be driving. You might be have a head on collision or something awful because that's your death house, Aries, Aries. And your North Nod and Taurus is in the eighth house. Your purpose is to be financially secure, comfortable and realize being more stable instead of so chaotic especially when you're getting angry and stuff and when you do get angry you are just sort of like angry like a uh, contemplating Taurus like you don't want to just ruffle feathers because they can buy your bullshit or you're probably amazing um storybook mother goose um uh storybook teller and we would all love that and you should attract all these Innocent minded broken people, Pisces, want to explore your fantasy world that you can come up with, especially with your speaking of the darkness that you know of, of the hardship, anyways. But your dad, how, like, talk like your dad or something like that. Who knows? Whatever. I don't know. Information. And, the, and your brothers and sisters could have been a hard relationship with them. And they could have been moved, scattered around. And they gave them expanding. I don't know. But what you Yeah. Um. But, um. That's the story of, that's the glory of multiple dimensional love. You have a serious heart and you can, you can make party games happen. You can make things real, really good with all this hard work and restrictions. You poor thing, you know, and, um, y'all are awesome, Virgo Risings. I love the Virgo Risings. Thank you. Anyways, yeah, maybe I can cycle read you. Who knows? Your Mars and Scorpio in the second house. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Libra. Wow. Okay. Well, that's that. I don't know. Um, thanks for asking me for to do this for you. I'm sorry. <laughs> if I said anything too ridiculous. I don't know. Or it was boring. I don't know. Toodles.